Hey guys, welcome. Let's talk about the Databricks Certified Data Engineer Professional Certification. And I just passed it today, so that's why I'm recording this video because I'm super excited. This, uh, this exam is super hard and uh, I passed it with 76.66%. I finished the, the exam in 101 minutes. This is also something that I, that I like to brag about because it's a very, very hard exam and you need to be very prepared for it okay it's not something that you can just like i'm just going to choose a, a quick um, answer and just move on with it you really have to put in a lot of effort when it comes to understanding the question first understanding the the, the body of the question which they make it very very complicated to to be serious to be realistic is very very complicated right and secondly the um, uh, the answers right the the options are also extremely tricky so you have to pay attention to everything uh, when you actually read the question and make sure that there's not like a change at the end of the question or like a flip you know when when they try to put it into a specific context and then at the end they just flip the whole narrative with the whole question around on its head and then you're like oh okay you know there's there's a lot of questions that are um, trying to trick you like that and also the answers are um, are quite are quite hard right the options that you have to choose i'm not going to talk about the exam itself as in what type of questions they ask you because of course i can't remember all of the questions right and it wouldn't be fair anyway if i would uh, be talking about that what i what i can talk about is um where in the documentation and what specific sections of the documentation you need to um really really um look into okay what happens with the exam is that you, of course you get um, you get the course right you get the course and the course is um, extremely detailed and, and it's great so the course is uh, really really detailed I feel like the course at times it's, it's a little bit dry to be honest because it's um, you're not gonna get much uh, information from the videos because you might as well just load the, um, the notebooks in your uh, Azure Databricks um, account and then just um, j just run them and then just figure things out like that rather than watching all of the all of the lessons because it can be also confusing and very tiresome if you just go through the the videos so that's my advice just first check the video if there's just the notebook go directly to the notebook and run those cells and just make sure that you understand what's going on there check the documentation all the time and if it's not about the notebook in the in the actual video then watch the video because it's going to be a presentation about different things right like for example again like uh, scds and uh, and and uh, various various other concepts that are not necessarily included in the notebook of course the those concepts that are presented in the videos they're also in the documentation so in theory if you just read the documentation on databricks that's uh you're, you're gonna be fine right but the documentation is huge right so there's a lot of information that uh, that you need to cover let's look through a couple of of things right so let's let me just share this as you can see i'm just gonna brag a bit so i got both the uh, certified data engineer and uh, certified data engineer professional as you can see I always passed I don't have any attempts in in which I didn't pass which is a great thing a lot of people will say that they have it but they might have failed a couple of times before they actually passed it because you can have unlimited tries so, but here when it comes to the completed exams you can see I passed this one and now I passed the professional as you can see 76.66 101 minutes okay this is uh this is important you need 70 um 70 percent in order to pass okay that's 42 questions so it's 60 questions so you need to make sure that you uh answer correctly 42 out of those 60 questions you're not going to get everything perfect right if you're going to get 100 percent, that's great right but most of the time you just need to make sure that you know everything as well as you can because anyway you're going to fail some questions not necessarily because probably you, you, you didn't know but because um, they're so confusing that some answers might look correct but in the context of the question 
it might not be the most optimal uh, the, the most optimal answer. Let's look at the documentation. And we're going to look at the data engineering. Of course, they ask a lot of questions from various sections and you can definitely go in the, um, in, uh, in the Databricks Academy and see exactly the split between the questions. I'm not going to share it here because it's not relevant. That's information that you can, that, that you already probably know. And, uh, if, if you just need to make sure that you understand what percentages are for testing, what percentages are for other, other components, then, um, check those videos. Delta life tables is not going to be that much about the Delta life tables because even in the academy at the moment, they say that they don't ask too many things about Delta life tables in detail. Delta life tables, you can cover them at, let's say in a, in a broader, um, per, from a brother's perspective, but definitely you need to understand all the concepts, but from Delta life tables, right? You still need a couple of things, right? So you need to go through everything here. Even if they say that they don't ask from Delta Live tables, you're still going to understand, you're going to need to understand change data capture, right? You're still going to need to understand orchestration, event log, API. There's a lot of questions around, uh, around these things. So even if they say they don't really test something, like they say with Delta table, Delta Live tables, that doesn't mean that they're not going to test specific things that might tangentially touch on Delta Live tables. When it comes to, to the next one, it's going to be questions on structured streaming. You need to make sure that everything here, you're, um, you understand watermarks for each batch and everything, right? If, uh, when it comes to watermarks, this is also a very important topic in the actual professional course. So clearly you need to understand these concepts. Well, again, for each, for each batch, these are again, um, in the, um, in the course. And you need to refer to the documentation to understand uh, things a lot better. But clearly structured streaming is a foundation thing that you need to know and understand everything around uh, structured streaming. So all of this section you need to know perfectly. Specific aspects you need to be aware of involves everything around clusters. So uh, managing clusters, best practices, understanding pools, understanding how to in, uh, to, to run uh, in its scripts, everything around debugging, everything around handling large queries and stuff like that. There's a lot of questions that are around clusters. And this is a section that I would definitely look into uh, in, in a very deep uh, manner. Notebooks as well. Make sure that you understand how to schedule, how to um, run notebooks. You also need to understand how to manage them. So you need to always look at permissions, everything around permissions, regardless whether it's notebooks or workflows or Unity catalog or anything else you need to, you need to know. Another one is workflows. And here again, as you can see, you have, you need to know how to create, run and manage jobs, how to create tasks, um, understand everything around them. Like, for example, like, um, when tasks run in parallel, when they fan out and all that stuff, you need to, understand all of these concepts. There's a lot of small things that are important, more important than you think. You don't just skim through the topics in the documentation. Make sure that you understand things line by line. Like for example, uh, a workspace is limited to 1000 concurrent task runs. What if you're going to get a question around this, right? It's just one paragraph in the documentation. And you might be thinking, ah, maybe it's not that relevant if I just understand the concept at, at, at a broad uh, level. It's not enough to understand the concept at a broad level. You need a uh, detailed understanding of everything. The notebooks themselves from the course are not enough. The notebooks are not enough. The videos are not enough. You need a combination of going through the notebooks, understand everything in the notebooks, going through the videos that aren't referring to the notebooks because uh, those videos have extra information that you might need and then cross-reference the videos and the notebooks to the documentation and make sure that you understand deeply what all these topics entail. It's not just about understanding things at a broad level. Okay. You're going to have a lot of questions around libraries as well, uh, and make sure that you understand all of these concepts and how to scope libraries, how to, 
um, what are cluster libraries versus workspace libraries. There's a lot of detail on optimization uh, recommendations on Databricks. Now, to be honest, look, guys, there's a lot of questions, right? The, the documentation is so broad that they, they, they have hundreds of questions, right? Hundreds of questions, maybe even thousands of questions. I don't know exactly. Uh, I only took the test once, right? But the, the optimization and performance tab here, this is super important. Everything around adaptive query execution, um, everything around caching, everything around um, uh, spill, skew, all of these concepts, they're super, super important, okay? Make sure that you understand what types of clusters to use based on the, sp the particular job types, okay? Whether you have wide transformations or not, what type of cluster would you would you use for that type of uh, problem? What if uh, it's like a more an analytics workflow? What type of cluster would you use if it's more of a just a general um, workflow that doesn't include um, wide transformations as well? You need to cover for those uh, for those things as well. Okay, they're also also going to ask a couple of things from machine learning. Okay, even if machine learning it's not in the um, in the course itself, if you check the course prep when it comes to what types of topics they cover they actually talk about machine learning keep this in mind keep this in mind that you need to understand a little bit about how to serve and deploy models understand a little bit about ml flow for example how to uh, about predictions how to serve predictions and uh, and and all that stuff right but in the context of data engineering so they're not gonna ask anything uh, around specific data science topics but they're gonna talk around about uh, machine learning in the context of data engineering and how to serve predictions and all that stuff, right? So keep in mind that machine learning is a topic, even if it's not included in the actual notebooks or in um, in the videos. But in the course prep, they they tell you that machine learning is included. Uh, you need to understand everything around a vacuum, time travel, change data feed, constraints, like everything right schema validation if if there's one thing that you need to cover is this whole section on delta lake all right everything around delta lake it's a lot harder a lot harder than i than i thought and uh as a fun fact make sure that you always like go to the loop before or stuff like that make sure that you have everything ready because during the the exam you cannot move so I needed to go to the loo after a half an hour and literally for the last hour and a half. So the majority of the of the exam, I was just like moving on my seat because I, I, I needed to go. But I, I couldn't right? because you need to be here. Right. It's a proctored exam and you need to be here. But I was just like, ah, oh, you know, I, what do I do? What do I do? You know, I was so stressed out. And also, also the complexity of the questions were, was 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 hard and I needed to focus on the question. But at the same time, physically, I kind of needed to go and I just managed to, to get through it. But it was hard. OK, so don't drink too much water before starting the exam. Overall, these are the main the main things. Go through the notebooks. Check all the references in the notebooks. Go through the videos again. Go through through the videos and especially the videos that aren't about the notebooks. OK, make sure that you check also the, the exam prep that they have on on the academy because they tell you exactly what types of uh, sections um, the, the percentage of questions around each per each particular section. So for those uh, for those things, you kind of you can get like a framework of what types of questions you might receive and also check the documentation. If there's one thing that I can recommend is checking the documentation. Documentation is your best friend, not the notebooks, not the not the course not anything not the videos right the documentation there's going to be a lot of questions around this and also your ability to understand things is not like just memorizing things from the documentation okay it's about them asking you practical questions in the real world in, in real world scenarios and how would you tackle those so there's, there's going to be questions that you might um, that docu the documentation helps but you need to be able to extrapolate to a real world scenario and understand how you would tackle that specific use case. 
So don't rely on memorization, like just memorize like the documentation. Maybe some people can do that and perfectly fine, but uh, that's not enough. You need to have also common sense and uh, the ability to extrapolate on a real world use case that they actually present and make sure that uh, you understand the question correctly. They will try to trick you uh, based on how they formulate the question. But I'm sure you're going to do fine. I'm sure you're going to do fine. It's, uh, it's a very hard exam. Don't take this lightly. And to be honest, this is one of the hardest exams that I, that I took for, uh, for this type of certification. But it's definitely worth it. You learn a lot of things and uh, I'm sure you will succeed. Also, if you like this type of content, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one.